Hi guys, in this video I will be fixing this toy car for kids. Uh, it's from the Italian brand Pec Perego and it's the model called Gaucho Superpower. I've already pulled the, uh, the wires and the C or whatever this is. Uh, at least this is where the issue is. This is a buzzer and this one goes off after just a couple of minutes of riding. And um, my guess is it's the low battery voltage cutoff circuit that is um, defect somehow. I've tried different batteries and both batteries are fully charged and both in a great state, but it just cuts off after a couple of minutes. So this one's got to go and then we'll, we will replace it. All right, so these are the ESCs that's going to go into uh, the car and they're both um, bought in the same store. They had diff different stickers on, but physically they appear to be the same. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to, uh, to where I bought these. And um, these guys will be controlled by this foot, foot pedal. This is intended to be used on a scooter, I think. Something like that. That's how it was sold. Now, the foot pedal and the ECs do not communicate together, so we're going to make a small program on an Arduino Nano and make sure that they can communicate through this. Okay, so here's the original pedal. It's just an on-off switch. It lives in this bay here. And um, it's connected to the, uh, the gear stick, has reverse and two forward positions. I'm not going to be using these, uh, this one in this build, uh, nor am I using the, this pedal. Instead I'm using this pedal, and then I've made this um, copy almost of the original mount. But instead, I've, instead of just um, mounting it flat, I've made a wedge so that the, the pedal is mounted at an angle and this will just make it a lot more comfortable to um, to uh, to press down otherwise it would be sitting like like this almost and that wouldn't be comfortable so like this pretty good all right let's look at the um, the entire setup here we have the battery and i've made this uh, small split cable because i need to power two as uh, the, the two separate escs so we're ready to connect those I got those right here. There we go. And one of the ECs is also powering the um, the Arduino. And the great thing about these ones, they output five volts. And this is exactly what the the Arduino Nano needs. But it's also five volts that we need for the pedal. So that's perfect. So that's that's pretty much it. Let's just line it up. Battery, split cable, two ESCs, our Arduino Nano, and our foot pedal. All we have to do now is connect this one, the motor connectors, to the extension wires I've already run here in the end of bay, all the way to the motors. And then we should be golden. Before we test drive it, we need to look at what's happening on our Nano, because that's definitely where the bulk of the work has been for me in this project. All right, let's have a look at the code. The first thing I'm going to do is to declare my input pin. This will be connected to the foot controller. This is my output pin that will be connected to the ESC. I'm declaring a variable that will store what we read from the foot controller, and they will also create a variable, uh, variable so we can um, check our math before we, uh, we write it to the pin 6. So, in my setup, I make sure that my output pin is indeed output. I open up a serial connection so I can do a, a print line of my values, so I can check uh, our work that we got the right values. Now, um, RC ESCs expect a frequency of around 50 Hz. Um, but the RC receiver that I've tried this uh, ESC with outputs 62 Hz. So that seems to be uh, within its um, um, accepted range. And um, so that's great. But the problem is that the PVM frequency, the default PVM frequency from the Arduino is 90, sorry, 976.56. So that's way off. But we can bring that down to 61.04 by just entering this line of code here. Now it's only possible to get 61 Hertz on pin six. Um, so this is why I'm using pin six. So you can check out the, the documentation here. It works? Great. Now in my loop, the first thing we do is to read 
from the full controller pin 3 and store it right here. And then we need to, uh, to discuss a couple of things. Um, now analog read can produce values, will be returning values between 0 and 1023, where 1023 will be 5 volts. That's the maximum that we can, uh, that this uh, analog read can handle. I've measured using a multimeter my, uh, my output range on my pedal when it's untouched, when it's in its up state, uh, no gas, it's 0.83. When it's fully pressed, it delivers 4.22 volts. So that's great. Now, like I said, if we, um, if we consider the, the 1024 uh, steps that we have here and divide that by 5 volts, then we have what would be 1 volt. So that's 204.8, which will be read from the analog read if we were to apply 3 volts to a pin, th oh, sorry, 1 volt to pin 3. So 204.8 is uh, the, the value per volt that we are supplying to pin 3. So if we multiply that with the minimum that we will be supplying 0.83, then we will have 169.984, which is, I rounded up to 170. When we take the maximum voltage 4.22 and multiply that with our 1, 1 volt, um, average, then we should have 864.256. So this is our input range that we will be getting from analog read. So 170 will be the same as 0 0.83 and 864 will be the same as 4.22. Great. Now the tricky part comes now because the ESE needs to be initialized with a PVM signal of 1.5 millisecond. So each pulse needs to be 1.5 milliseconds. So we need to, uh, to figure out how to turn 170 into a PVM signal where it's just 1.5 milliseconds. We do that by multiplying our uh, pulse width with our frequency. And that gives us 91.56 milliseconds where it is, you could say, in its high state. And that equates 9.156% duty cycle. Analog write, which is the function we'll be using here, um, accepts values between two, or 0 and 255. And if we were to write 255 to it, that would equate 100% duty cycle. So if we do that and take all the steps, 256 steps, and divide by 100, then we get what would equate 1% duty cycle, which is 2.56. So this is 1% duty cycle. When we apply it to our 9%, 0.156% duty cycle, then we get 23.44, which I round down to 23 because it's an integer function, so the decimals will be lost or rounded uh, in, in some way anyways. From the decimal documentation, I also read that full gas is achieved at 2.2 milliseconds, which I find a bit strange because I think most ESCs are just 2.0, so I don't know why it's 2.2, but no worries. Um, same structure, 2.2 times our frequency is going to give us 134.288, which is 13.288% duty cycle. So we know that 1% is 2.56, so when multiplied with our duty cycle, that's going to give us 34.017. So that's an easy round to 34. Then we need to do some mapping, because now we have our input range we have our output range, minimum, maximum, and we want to make sure that when we read 170, that is translated to 23, and when we read 864, the full gas, that's translated to 34, and all the values in between are also mapped uh, accordingly. And that's a great function for that. It's called the map function. It takes five arguments. The first, that is um, the value that will be alternating. That's the input um, value from analog read, pin 3, our foot pedal. Then we have the minimum in the input range, the maximum in the input range, the minimum in the output range, and the maximum of the output range. Then this value, the PVM out value, 
is the one that we'll be using for analog write on our pin 6. Now, I said that I was going to use 23, but it says 22 here. That's because it does not work on 23. When I run it on 23, my AC flashes gives me the, uh, an error message indicating that I'm not achieving a initial duty cycle, sorry, um, pulse width of 1.5 milliseconds. So I just fixed it by lowering my output uh, minimum range to 22, and then the AC is happy. It works. Now, maybe something is not perfect in my math. That wouldn't be the first time. Uh, but I also found that in the documentation, it actually says that on pin 6, specifically on pin 6, there's a higher output than expected for some reason. So that's maybe that alone uh, causes it, but maybe I also got some stuff going up here that's not 100% correct. But I can't really bother because it works when I do it like this. Um, finally, I'm just um, printing my input value and my output value, um, which has been very useful in my, um, my development of this code. So let's have a look at the, um, the whole thing in action. Okay, so I've opened up a serial monitor and right now I'm not touching the pedal at all. So you can see that it's actually at 173 where we expected 170. The output is 22. That's pretty good. So I'm just gonna slowly start to press the pedal down. 426, 527. See if you can squeeze this down. 866, 34. So that's, I'm just gonna ease it a bit. Yeah, so this seems pretty good. It works as intended. So I hooked up the, uh, the Arduino to the foot pedal and uh, to an old uh, oscilloscope. And the resolution is one millisecond. So yeah, it's impossible to see how, um, how precise it is. But as I press down, I'm just gonna put it over here just to have a look at the pulse width. So it's supposed to be 2.2 milliseconds at a max and 1.5 milliseconds when it's not pressed. So I think it should be pretty good. We're just going to test it using the RC function. <laughs> and then he just took off. Now we have reverse. We pull again. We pull again. <laughs> <laughs> 